Today, we will talk about the magnetic compass errors caused by acceleration. As we mentioned in previous videos, the magnetic compass is basically a magnet that is free to rotate about a pivot point, and therefore, since it has such a simple design, it has certain inherent errors that pilots should be aware of. These errors are magnetic variation, compass deviation, and magnetic dip, which in turn can be divided into acceleration error and turning error. In the last video, we already talked about variation and deviation. So in this video, we will focus on the acceleration error. However, before going into detail with this, let's see what is magnetic dip. As we know, a magnet always aligns with the flux lines of the Earth's magnetic field. And as we can see in this image, these flux lines are parallel to the surface at the equator. However, as they approach the poles, they become more vertical. Let's see it in more detail with this other example. The planet's core will act as a giant magnet. Therefore, this will create a magnetic field around it, which is represented with this flux line. The point at which this line leaves the planet is known as the magnetic south pole while the point where it re-enters the planet is known as the magnetic north pole. If we observe in detail the flux lines of the magnetic field, we can see that they have this pattern. Here, as we can see, in the equator, the lines are parallel to the surface. So we can say in other words, that the force that orients the compass is completely horizontal. While on the other hand, at the poles, these lines are very steep, almost vertical. So we can say that in this case, the force that orients the compass is totally vertical. At this point we might be wondering, how does this affect a compass? Well, we must remember that in essence, a compass is a magnet free to rotate around a pivot point. However, in order to give the heading indication, this magnet should rotate horizontally. Therefore, to do so, it requires the horizontal component of the Earth's magnetic field. So in other words, it needs the horizontal force which is parallel to the surface, not the vertical one. With this in mind, if we look at the previous example, we can see that, if we place a compass at the equator, the magnetic force acting on it is completely horizontal, since it is parallel to the Earth's surface. Then, the compass will rotate horizontally giving the heading indication properly. However, if we place the compass far from the equator, and closer to one of the poles, it will not only experience the horizontal force of the magnetic field, but also a vertical component. This vertical component will cause the magnet to tilt around the pivot point, as we can see in this example. In summary then. If we put a compass on the surface of the equator, it will only experience the horizontal component of the magnetic field, so it will be completely balanced and will work correctly. However, if we place the compass closer to the North Pole, it will not only rotate horizontally, but will also tilt due to the vertical component of the magnetic field. This tilting of the compass is known as magnetic dip. And as we just said, it is not present at the equator, since in this case, the force is completely horizontal. Therefore we can say, that in the equator, the compass indication does not experience magnetic dip errors. Now, if we are at any point between the equator and one of the poles, the magnet will tilt due to the vertical component of the magnetic field. And although in this position the compass can still rotate horizontally, this tilting will produce errors in the compass indication under certain flight conditions, such as accelerations or turnings. In this video, we will focus on the acceleration error, so let's get started. The thing is that, when accelerating, or decelerating, the inertia combined with the magnetic dip, will cause the compass to show an erroneous heading indication temporarily. But in order to understand why this happens, let's see the next example. Here we have a compass at the equator, which is completely balanced. In this case, the center of gravity of the magnet is aligned with the pivot point, so the compass reading will not be affected by acceleration or deceleration. However, if the compass is placed in the northern hemisphere, the magnet will tilt due to the magnetic dip effect. And here, as we can see, the center of gravity is no longer aligned with the pivot point. Now, although what really happens is that the whole magnet shifts to one side, if we see it from a top point of view, we would see, 
as if the center of gravity of the magnet shifts to the blue side. So with this in mind, let's see what effect this has on the compass indication. In the northern hemisphere, when flying on a west or east heading, the inertia caused during acceleration will cause the compass indication to deviate slightly to the north. And the opposite happens during a deceleration, in this case, the inertia will cause the compass indication to deviate slightly to the south. But let's see why this happens. Here we have an aircraft flying to the east with heading 09 or 0. As we can see, inside the compass we have the magnet with the center of gravity shifted towards the blue side due to the magnetic dip. So in this situation, if the aircraft accelerates, inertia will pull the magnet's center of gravity backward, causing the compass to give a false turn indication to the north, although the aircraft is actually still flying on the same heading. This effect will occur as long as the aircraft continues to accelerate, since once the acceleration finishes and the aircraft flies with a constant speed again, the inertia will disappear and the compass will gradually return to the correct heading indication. And the opposite happens if the aircraft decelerates. In this case, inertia will pull the magnet's center of gravity forward, causing the compass to give a false turn indication to the south. Now, again, this will happen as long as the aircraft continues to decelerate. Since once the deceleration finishes and the aircraft flies with a constant speed again, the inertia will disappear and the compass will gradually return to the correct heading indication. Exactly the same effect occurs when flying to the west, in this case with heading 270. Here, if the aircraft accelerates, the compass will give a false turn indication to the north. And once the aircraft stops accelerating and maintains a constant speed, the inertia will disappear and the compass will return to the correct heading indication. If the aircraft decelerates, the compass will give a false turn indication to the south. And once the aircraft stops decelerating and maintains a constant speed, the inertia will disappear and the compass will return to the correct heading indication. So far, we have seen what happens if the aircraft flies with a west or east heading, but let's see what happens if the aircraft flies with a north or south heading. Well, in this case, inertia will not affect the heading indication. So in other words, there will be no errors when accelerating or decelerating. This happens because the center of gravity, the pivot point, and the inertia are aligned with each other, so the magnet has no tendency to rotate to either side. In summary then, this effect is greater when flying on a west or east heading. And in the northern hemisphere, when the aircraft accelerates, the compass indication deviates slightly to the north. While when the aircraft decelerates, the compass indication deviates slightly to the south. We can easily remember this with the acronym ANDS, which stands for Accelerate North, Decelerate South. Now, it is important to mention that the magnitude of this acceleration error will depend on the latitude and how fast the acceleration or deceleration is. So far, we have seen what happens in the northern hemisphere. Let's now see the case of the southern hemisphere. Again, we know that at the equator, the magnetic field force is totally horizontal, and therefore the center of gravity is aligned with the pivot point. However, in the southern hemisphere, the magnet will tilt like this because of the magnetic dip effect. And as we can see, if we look at the top view, the center of gravity is shifted to the red side of the magnet. So it is the opposite of what happened in the northern hemisphere, where the center of gravity was shifted to the blue side. This implies that the errors due to acceleration will be opposite, let's look at the examples. In the southern hemisphere, when flying on a west or east heading, if the aircraft accelerates, inertia will cause the compass indication to deviate slightly to the south, and if the aircraft decelerates, the compass indication will deviate to the north. So here for example, we have an aircraft flying to the east with heading 09 or 0. And inside the compass we have the magnet with the center of gravity shifted towards the red side due to magnetic dip. Here, if the aircraft accelerates, inertia will pull the magnet's center of gravity backward, causing the compass to give a false turn indication to the south, although the aircraft is actually still flying on the same heading. 
This effect will occur as long as the aircraft continues to accelerate, since once the acceleration finishes and the aircraft flies with a constant speed again, the inertia will disappear and the compass will gradually return to the correct heading indication. On the other hand, if the aircraft accelerates, inertia will pull the magnet center of gravity forward, causing the compass to give a false turn indication to the north. Now, this will happen as long as the aircraft continues to decelerate. Since once the deceleration finishes and the aircraft flies with a constant speed again, the inertia will disappear and the compass will gradually return to the correct heading indication. The same effect is present if the aircraft flies to the west, in this case with heading 270. In this situation, if the aircraft accelerates, the compass will indicate a turn to the south. This will happen until the acceleration finishes, then the inertia disappears and the compass returns to the correct heading indication. Now, if the aircraft accelerates, the compass will indicate a turn to the north until the aircraft stops decelerating and maintains a constant speed. Then the compass will return to the correct heading indication. And just like in the northern hemisphere, if the aircraft flies with a north or south heading, inertia will not affect the heading indication, which means that there will be no acceleration or deceleration errors, since the center of gravity, the pivot point, and the inertia are aligned with each other. In summary then, this effect is greater when flying on a west or east heading. And in the southern hemisphere, when the aircraft accelerates, the compass indication deviates slightly to the south. While when the aircraft decelerates, the compass indication deviates slightly to the north. We can easily remember this with the acronym SAND, which stands for South Accelerate, North Decelerate. And just like in the Northern Hemisphere, the magnitude of this acceleration error will depend on the latitude and how fast the acceleration or deceleration is. Now, something important to mention is that these Northern and Southern Hemispheres are determined in relation to the magnetic equator instead of the geographic equator. And as we can see in this image, they do not always match. And therefore we must highlight that the effects caused by the magnetic dip will depend on the position in relation to the magnetic equator, not the geographic one. We can see more clearly the distribution of these hemispheres in this image. Here, the green line represents the magnetic equator. The blue area corresponds to the magnetic northern hemisphere and the red area to the magnetic southern hemisphere. I hope the information presented in this video was useful. If so, don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching.